CataractCoach.com, peeling off a pupillary membrane in an eye with a prior corneal transplant. And I got OCT imaging to show you too. So here's the eye, had a corneal transplant many years ago, dense cataract, pupillary membrane, a lot of sneakyae. Here's the OCT scan, there's the cornea. And if we zoom down a little bit there, there's the iris as well as the membrane that's coming across. So this is a membrane from one edge to the other edge of that pupil. So we'll have to definitely peel that off. Going to the angle here, you see the graft host junction on the cornea, and you see the angle looks pretty reasonable and open. I'm gonna put some tripen blue dye in. There's one spot where there's no membrane, so we're gonna go under that. Very important to inject this tripen blue dye on the lens capsule, not on the pupillary membrane. So we went underneath the iris here, injecting a sufficient degree of tripen blue dye to stain the lens capsule. We're not trying to just stain the pupillary membrane. That's why it's important to get under there. Making a scleral tunnel incision, that's an important thing. We wanna to avoid touching this cornea. The graft is holding up okay. Not the prettiest corneal transplant. It was done elsewhere many years ago. Using the capsorexis forceps, now we're gonna grab that membrane and almost the same motion as a capsorexis, we're gonna peel off this membrane. Taking our time to do that, going around for the full 360, we can peel off this membrane and that's gonna also help expand the pupil. Even now, just by removing the membrane, you can see how much bigger the pupil has become. And there's the end of it, and we've got it off. So there it is, that's the balled up pupillary membrane, we'll get rid of that. Now let's just do a little pupil stretch, we don't need too much. Use um, two instruments like a chopper, and then in here the left hand's an iris push-pull. And you can use that and push this pupil apart, get a little more stretch, and then we'll do viscodilation. There's a good dilation now of the pupil. Doing the capsorex, you can see the tripan blue dye did a great job of staining the lens capsule. We don't want to make a baby-sized capsorexis, and we don't want to make a too, a too large of one either. So we want to have about a five millimeter axis. Here's putting the chopper in and a cannula. We're going to do a phaco chop before putting the probe in. So there we go. Just split the nucleus there, we have two halves. Now we can let the resident take over, emulsify each half, bring them towards the iris plane, chopper goes around, and we can chop and remove this nucleus staying away from the corneal endothelium. Of course, as the transplanted eye and the endothelial cell counts low. By manual cortex removal here with the IA system, we'll clean all that up real nicely. And then again, everything so far looks pretty good. We want to definitely control inflammation in the post op period for the survival of that graft. Plus, we had a lot of iris manipulation, and that may induce additional inflammatory processes. So we want to control that. Here comes our lens. Single piece acrylic lens is going to go in the capsule bag nice and easy. Now with this cornea, we chose a higher lens power to make sure the patient ends up myopic. And the patient can certainly wear a contact lens and rigid gas permeable lens to help optimize the vision with that cornea, or if it's fairly regular, we can do laser vision correction and an eczema laser ablation. Again, important to end up myopic, not hyperopic. So always look at that central corneal zone on topography and choose the lowest K power there in that central three millimeters to do your calculations. That way the patient, if anything, will end up on the slightly myopic side. Removing the viscoelastic, cleaning up the end of the case, there's a nice overlap of that optic. That looks fantastic. In an eye like this, I definitely suggest placing a suture. So here's a 10 nylon suture being used to suture the main incision. And then this is a relatively easy procedure to suture, certainly well within the wheelhouse of uh, resident surgeons. And then we'll close the conjunctiva on top of that. We can check to see that's going to be rotated into the cornea. And we're pretty certain that cornea, uh, that incision is gonna be sealed. So there we go, rotated towards the cornea, so it's totally buried in the sclera. That looks great. Now we can finish up the case. So interesting case, learned a lot today. There's that paracentesis, that'll be sutured as well because there's a slight leak. If you have an interesting case, submit it to us, cataractcoach.com. You can also go there and sign up for our free email. You get a brand new email every morning to your inbox with a great case. No need to keep hunting for YouTube. I love YouTube also. But cataractcoach.com is a better way of enjoying these videos and it's far more organized than simply searching on YouTube. Thanks for watching.